cuts across. Nobody's there. Price is going to make it into the end zone. Touchdown, modern day. The Monarchs are on the board with an unbelievable run by Rafael Price cutting all the way back against the green into the end zone. There are different, it's a different type of football modern day plays, you know. They don't have, you know, 11 great athletes that go out there and, you know, just get the job done. Basically what they have is just, you know, 22 kids that are full of heart and led by a great coach who just installs inspiration. They're disciplined, they're strong, and it doesn't matter how big, how strong you are, you know, what your record is. You know, we're a part of modern day, the three strikers, and we just come into every game. And we had a lot of adversity throughout the whole year. We managed to work through it. And win some good games, tough games, and have a good fun solid season. Um, it's been a great honor being a Monarch, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful tradition to be a part of. It's, it represents hard work, um, the greatness of uh, many teams in the past have, uh, once you're a part of that, you know, you feel real special because it, it's just like you're part of a, a, something bigger than, you know, what you are. Well, our theme this year was Red Courage, and I mean, I don't know, it's, Strange how, you know, when they pick it at the beginning of the season and then it just turned out to be what we needed to have. If we would have just quit, it would have been a disaster, but we made it to the semis because we didn't get in. Guys moved around, guys adapted and kept working hard. Seniors tried to lead us. I think red courage was important to us. I, I really believe football is a game of courage and, and, and I thought that if we were going to be successful, we would have to tap into reserves of courage that hadn't been tapped into before by everybody, myself included. It was a good year and uh, you know, when, when you create uh, a program like we've created the the finals is the ultimate goal and having done it you know the five times you know that we've been there or the seven times whatever it is you know the, some people consider it a letdown I look back at the 2001 team and, and and I'm actually very pleased with with the results of the season coaching wise I'll tell you what my coaching staff I really believe it was their finest hour. Uh, you know, I, I stayed in the background and just kept saying, guys, we can get it turned around. We can get it turned around, you know, because I sensed in the kids that they believed that they still had the ability. I thought we had a great off season. I thought we developed some leadership in the weight room. Uh, you know, that I thought Camp Monarch went really well. I thought we had some great ceremonies, the striping ceremony was one of the most powerful that, that we've had in recent years. Some great honesty, some, uh, some great sharing by the individuals. I knew they wanted to win, but you know what? When it's all said and done, these guys willed their way. My coaching staff willed them, and I tried to will us, and I, and I felt like we did it. And I feel very proud of the fact that, you know, we went down fighting in the semifinals. Division I football in Southern California is some of the best football that's played in the nation, and we're in the last four teams to go down. Uh, at the beginning of the year, actually at last year's banquet, I challenged the football team. The word was that we were not, uh, you know, we, the cupboard was bare. Modern day is going to have a down year. Well, if the semifinals is a down year, then watch out next year. Um, in an overview of the season, you know, the kids come out one and three. I've been in modern day for 11 years, and we have lost three games in a season. That's the most I've ever lost in a season. And uh, the kids know that, and they came out, and, and they fought back from that. And they believed in themselves, believed in each other, and they got it done. And this is a test to their courage, their discipline, uh, and to the modern day football tradition that we're going to succeed no matter what happens to us. 
You know, Rob always talks about dealing with adversity. Well, they dealt with a lot of adversity all year and injuries and losses and public opinion and so forth. You know, and they got knocked down, but they didn't lay down. They got back up and fought and they made it to the semifinal. Going into the 2001 season, we had high expectations for the modern day offense, as we always do. Uh, starting with up front with Chris Doyle, Jeff Manicero, Vince Ortiz, Adam Hurtado, and Nelson Calderon. Um, we were hoping that we could establish a strong run game right from the beginning of the season. And then we're also hoping that Jeff Deptola and, and Brian Henley could fill in nicely for us, too. Uh, we went into the Fallbrook game, hoping again that we could just dominate you know, with our running game, and, and we were able to bring quarterback, you know, Colt Lennon along, and, and also get, you know, Raphael Rice and the other running backs like Nate Coash and Dominic Rickard involved. Um, unfortunately, in the first quarter, we lost Vince Ortiz, our starting offensive lineman, uh, a real catalyst of that offensive line, early in the first quarter. And we were down 17-0 at halftime, so we went in, made the necessary adjustments that we had to make to uh, get back in the ball game and uh, came out and uh, did much better in the, the second half. We were able to come back and, and pull off that victory. One of the strengths of our offense this year was our you know, wide receivers. And uh, Matt Haugen was a three-year returning starter for us. And he had a very good senior season with 35 catches. And Julian Pettit and Kenny Shaquin also added 28 apiece, respectively. Uh, at the tight end position, Keith Greer was one of our most consistent offensive players. Uh, he had 25 catches and did a phenomenal job of run blocking all year long, along with Jeff Manicero. Uh, I'd like to say that Jeff Manicero and Keith Greer were our two most consistent players on the offense. And there's got a man open. He catches it off to the races. A lot of speed here down to the 20. Going to go all the way. Touchdown, modern day. I'll tell you, Julian Pettit was, a, was just a weapon last week. And Vince Rude is talking about Cole Brennan. Uh, and look at the protection. The pump pump. fake. And watch him lay this on the pump and go. And uh, that had been their big play receiver. Bruce Rawlings had watched for him this week when we talked to him earlier in the week. And uh, he's a big play player. And, uh, you know, Colt Brennan would just. Cone wide to the right, second down and long. Brennan fakes the handoff, bootlegs out to the right, finds a man open, across the 40, first down territory, cuts back, be knocked out of bounds, or not, stays inbounds. Trips to the right, down the middle, pass completed. After he pops out of his hands, does a good job of Cone, who has, he is, they are running to the right, and it is a first down and more. So Bill, you called it, the ball comes off the turf, but it will not be a fun bar side of the field. Brennan back to pass, he has a man up, open in the middle, first down, down to the 35 and into the 33 yard line. So an outstanding pass play by Brennan. He hooks up with number three, and that's Haugen who's gonna be his main receiver all night long. Well, with Julian Pettit out of the game, Matt Haugen's been uh, a really a prime target all year long. Raphael Rice. He'll touch it again. He runs to his left to the 44-yard line. They got to hurry up. 
That's Dominic uh, Rickard, Rickard that they me. put in there at tailback. And we're in the first half. Brennan back to pass, looking down the field. He's going to go the short way, getting out of bounds. Going back, great protection. Brennan throwing the football. Can the guy get out of bounds? No. They stay in bounds. Brennan's going to throw to the left. He's got a man still on his feet at the nine yard line. He gets a first down. Forced into this year, but they have a man open. He gets a, gets out. He's still on his feet at the 46 yard line. He steps out of bounds, and that's Haugen. Look at the faces, listen to the bells. It's hard to believe we need a place called hell. Brennan, back to pass. There's a man open. Touchdown, modern days. Wow. Shaquin gets in with 525 to go in the game, and modern day has closed the gap. Incomplete passes. Down the middle. Another pass completed to number 86, Gunderman. I want to say that we have. Get it. Completes another one for a first down inside the 20 yard line. Call it the 19 yard line. They hurry up. The offensive lineman get up. Well, here comes the woman with a look in her eye. She's dressed on leather with flesh on the lines. Words and weapons, sharp on the knives. Makes you wonder how the other half died. Devil inside, the devil inside. Every single one of us, the devil inside. The devil inside, the devil inside. Every single one of us, the devil inside. The devil inside, the devil inside. Every single one of us, the devil inside. Devil inside, devil inside. Every single one of us, the devil inside. Uh, when we talk about special teams at modern day, um, we, we look for a great football player, a guy that can run, tackle, uh, block, but more so we're looking for an attitude. Uh, we thought we found a real good core of, a core of young men that, that fit that attitude and they were also very good football players. I feel um, as a player and as a coach that special teams is about 10% ability and 90% desire and we had those, those core of individuals that had that great desire to be successful on special teams. Uh, guys like Blake Meredith, David Jirasi, Ross Poole, our long snapper Will Collins uh, had an excellent year, was unbelievably consistent for us as a junior. Um, Dominic Rickard, who never left the field, also made great contributions on the special teams. Uh, Kenny Shaquin, our punter, Tim Shaquin, our place kicker, uh, who just got better and better as the year went along, Tyler Hall, um, Tommy Mulio. No one exemplified it that attitude more so than, than Greg Vickers though. And I think that everybody in the stands could see that, everybody on the sidelines, that, that kid was born to play special teams. You know, he's a good football player all around, but if you watch and focus in on him, he's the type of guy, and he did it more than once. He comes down, he blows up two people, uh, hurdles their carcasses, runs the ball carrier down from behind, causes a fumble, and then recovers it.
Chiquen with a line drive punt. Lands at the 14, Middleton on a bounce. Middleton breaks the first tackle, and Middleton back to the 13-yard line. Dangerous and delicate play. season the most challenging game was um, when we played Bishop Vermont game five um, you know coming off of a, you know three losses we were really struggling at first you know and coach Ronson said you know this is it you know they were undefeated this is do or die you know what are you gonna do you know are you gonna live or are you gonna die uh, the two Catholic schools going head-to-head -head, and the, my favorite line was what Rollo said when he said it's just gonna be a bloodbath and the toughest guys can be standing we go up to Ahmad they're undefeated and the pressure's off. I mean, I, I, I played in championship games and felt less pressure than I felt in that football game. I knew that that was the pivotal point. If we get whacked again, you know, I, I don't have enough fingers to plug the holes in the dam. Then we go out and we, we started out very slowly. It didn't, it looked like the same things were occurring. And, and you know what, it wasn't a lack of intensity by the men, it wasn't a lack of focus. I just think we were unlucky. We got bad breaks. You know, we dropped passes that should have been caught. We, we did some things that weren't atypical. I don't know what happened. It was like all of a sudden they bowed their necks and they just said enough is enough. I, I could sense that we had this thing turned around. Uh, and, and the next thing you know, we pull out a big win up there and you could just feel the pressure uh, release.
Baby, baby, we can share this skin. We can know how we feel inside. Instead of going down an endless road, not knowing if we did or lied. Going into the year, we knew that we were going to be young early. We had two returning starters coming back, and Liam Fallis and Nick Koash. Uh, Brian Henley played some last year for Trevor Hovater, but he hadn't had a lot of experience. So getting the right nine kids in position was going to be a challenge for the coaching staff. Um, I was very impressed with how we came out against Fallbrook. Uh, we, we gave up 10 points early, but we were down 17 nothing at halftime. And the boys fought back and, and uh, created two turnovers in the second half and, and we ended up winning the football game. Great comeback. And that was kind of the, the start of the season for the kids is they had adversity early in that game and then they're gonna, they got hit in the mouth in games uh, two and three, but they didn't lie down. before he can get Exactly what Modern Day was looking for. A huge hit. And uh, uh, everybody is, is uh, congratulating number 13 who fell on that ball. Back to pass, a quick pass. Oh, that you saw that coming. 
You saw it coming and lights out there. That's a deep leader for sure. White gets it. Garp is a senior, modern day coming up. But look at the effort that White puts through. And if you're number 13, you're going to have to hold on. That's Keith Greer. And Greer did a good job, guys, of holding on to a very strong White. situation. See Rickard there and Modern Day comes up with the play that they needed to stop Ashton White. Well number 21 Four. just coming up out of secondary. Dominic, Dominic Rickard. He's had a phenomenal year. Trouble. He gets away and he throws the ball and then there's a flag in the backfield. Play here for modern day, I would assume. White stays on his feet. Third and two. It's going to be White. A oh, great defensive play. Just out to find the better part of me. I'm more than a bird, I'm more than a plane, I'm more than some pretty face beside a train, and it's not easy. Thank you. 
to Ayers. From the gun. Brennan looking down the right side. Got a man. First down on a big hit, but he holds on. That's a heck of a catch by Matt Haugen. The defense average is 6'1", 250 pounds. And you can see the, the Servite offensive line had no push on that touch. The defender's right there to make a play. Looks like it was Nicholas standing right in that hole. So nice read by Nicholas. They're down at six now for Kofeltz, who is very accurate. Penalty flag on the play. Throw across the middle. That ball's intercepted. Well, it's modern day's ball right now, but let's see what happens. Intercepted by Ricard. Rice, touchdown, modern day. Pressure coming, got to get rid of it. Going down at the 23 yard line in Kofel. And three red jerseys right behind him. Ricard, again, one of those jet ends that Modern Day has made famous over the last couple of years. Quick throw out in the flat. Haugen. Haugen already has a big play tonight. Spun around at the 10 yard line. Now, Servite can't afford to be down right now because Rice will stuff in the end zone, and he does. And it's 12 0. First guy through. Dominic Ricard all the way to the 20 of Servite. Colfeld gonna throw from the end zone. Colfeld underthrown and intercepted. Patrol. Corey Patrol. One guy to beat. It's Colfeld. The quarterback drops him at the eight. Is he in? Touchdown, Modern Day. Rickard has been doing it all night long. He thought he had a touchdown in the first half on the same play. Out from the gun. Desperate times. They're down 19 0. They go to Slater across the middle. He has picked up, and Chiquin drives him into the turf at Eddie West Stadium. last play of the game. So it was all modern day tonight. And Bruce Rawlinson gets the win that he wants as he beats Servite, 19 to nothing. Bruce Rawlinson and the Monarchs. Oh, JJ, they lost three in a row. People said modern day's through, they're done. Forget about them. Oh, modern day never write off the Monarch. From Long Beach Jordan High School, Ed Dodd Sports presents the first round of the CIF playoffs.
McCoy behind Smith. He gets a blitz on the inside to wrap him up for a loss of five. Colt Brennan throws over the middle and he has a completion. It'll give him a first down. Brennan on an end around. Gives it to Shaquin. Shaquin with a first down. Smith looking at the defense. Pitch goes to McCoy, he bobbles it, then he's got it. He's wrapped up, thrown behind the line of scrimmage on a great defensive play coming up to make the spot. On the play. Here they come with a the blitz. They set up the screen right in the middle of the screen. They nail the receiver for a loss of five. It's Kenny Shaquin. Junior place kicker has it up. It's long enough and it's good. Nine nothing, modern day on a 37 yard field goal by Tim Shaquin out of the hole by his senior brother Kenny. With McCullough to punch, they're going to fake it. They tried it last time. Tapuli is dropped for a loss. rewarding game was probably probably Redlands because they were 11 and 0 and everybody thought they were going to win. I heard it all week on the radio that they were going to beat us and it was nice that we we just beat them. We got them from the opening kickoff when Ross returned the touchdown and we we beat them. They were 11 and 0. They were supposed to be the best and we beat them. <laughs> Just like Coach Rawlinson said, it was a great, great feeling, you know, go to practice on Thursday, see all my old friends from the year before and be able to interact with them and then go out with my family that night, eat turkey, you know, relax, and wake up that next morning and know that I get to play a football game today. You know, and how lucky I was that we got this far. You know, it was great to go out there and just show everybody on Thanksgiving weekend, you know, the tradition of modern day being there and playing, to come up big and upset that team and go on to the CIF final. Day gets the ball on the 35-yard line. Great field position, busting up the middle and getting close to the 48-yard line on their first running play. And this one sails. This is a good punt. Picking it up just inside the 19-yard line. Planning in his 10. The ball's loose. Modern Day comes up with it. The ball popped out before the knee dropped down, and Modern Day comes up with a turnover. who comes up with the fumble recovery. They haven't seen the other day. Here they go now. Modern Day comes up with the football. Is it 
quarterback. A pitch to Martinez, and Martinez gets brought down from behind on a shoestring tackle. Delta, Delta Grano with another good play. They fake the handoff for Rice. They throw to the right. They've got a man open. He's going to get it for the touchdown. Well, modern day has a lot of tradition, and I know I haven't been in any other high school, but I'm pretty sure that we have a lot more tradition than some of the other schools around. And that's why we're consistent, because of the tradition and the pride that comes with modern day football. It makes us good every single year, as opposed to some schools that might have a couple good years of talent and then taper off. The pride and the, the tradition it's never going to leave modern day, so we're always going to be up there. You know, modern day, is, it's special. It's, it's, it's different than a lot of other schools out there. Growing up where I live, you know, I, I see the schools around where I live, and it's just, modern day is special. There's something about it. You know, it's like a big, you know, I've always looked at it as a big um, storybook, and each year it has this different chapter. And you look back, and, you know, you look at the guys from 91, Billy Blanton, you know, and then you look at Flynn and Bodner, and, you know, just like every year there's a story to it. And there's always this mystique about what modern day does. And, you know, it's great to know that some of the guys like John Ewart, you know, and guys uh, that were CAF players of the years like Matt Good, to know that you're a part of what they did when they were in high school. And you walk down the same halls and say the same prayers and go into the same practice field and maybe have the same locker as them. And it's just a really special feeling to be a part of modern day, modern day and be a part of it all. Things that I think I would remember being a monarch would be uh, just all the friendships that I've made, all the guys that I've met, and uh, the memories that we've we've uh, created together, playing football, lifting together, running together, training all the time. And uh, I would say that the thing that sticks the most out in my mind is uh, probably the traditions that go along with it, like the monarch march and uh, the pride drill and things like that. Remember all the all the hard work we did, all the hell weeks, the pasta feeds, the Taco Tuesdays, me and Henley's and Liam's back of the bus traditions, and, and Coach Rawlinson yelling at everybody every single practice, and Rainus. Just the friendships as a modern. I mean, throughout modern day football, I've developed a lot of great friendships. I've had a lot of great times. Um, just the traditions that you go through at modern day. The discipline I've learned here. Uh, I'll always remember like our meetings just as like our wide receiver groups. And we had great times together, just the seniors and our coach buddy. Uh, those would be the memorable times. The most memorable thing at Modern Day would have to be the friendships and all the feasts and food and all the traditions, the little speeches that Raul gives before games. Those I'll never forget those. As a monarch playing modern day football, the uh, main thing I'm going to remember is just the camaraderie I had with all my uh, brothers on the team and the way uh, Coach Rawlinson was always there for us and uh, just the way we worked hard in the weight room, on the field, and uh, just loved to play football. May it be an
In years gone by, we've always had the scroll at the end, and, and, and you know what? I think it's time that, that uh, they heard directly from me. We, we've had a lot of people who have made this a great, great season. Some, some people behind the scenes that, that I want to thank. Obviously, our administration, special person in the program, Helen Steves. You know, you, you can't believe the work she does for modern day high school and the work she does for modern day football. Helen, I love you. Thank you for everything that you do. My equipment manager, Chris Abeda. So many hours, so much hard work, so much stress. Never does he say, no, I can't do that. Mike Fernandez. Mike, I mean, I don't know how he kept us healthy, you know. Uh, you know, we've talked about the injuries of this season. Well, a lot of injuries got back out on the field to the results of his and his staff's hard work. Mike, another outstanding effort. I mean, my Booster Club board this year was, was what a great group. I just enjoyed the meetings. I enjoyed working with them. Some of these men have worked for four years in this capacity. This is a no-nonsense, no credit, no, you know, very few pats on the back. People just show up and, and they expect the event to be perfect, but these men make those events perfect. And, and Booster Club Board, I, I, I'll tell you what, you know, you were tremendous and your loyalty means a lot to me. Andy Hurtado, Nancy Hurtado, thank you very much for Camp Monarch. I, I am going to single them out because of their astronomical efforts and, and I don't think anybody would be offended because it, it was probably our greatest camp monarch, my managers. It's always hard for me to put into words how special and, and what, a, what a great thing I think that you girls do. You know that I care about you. I know the sacrifices that you make sitting out there in the cold and the hot. I, I just, I want you to know that you are a major part of this program. You are a major part in our success this year. I will miss each and every one of you. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for everything that you did for my players, for my coaches, and for this great football program. I'd also like to thank Joe Donahue, Pro Sport Rehabilitation, along with you know Mike Fernandez to keep us healthy and on the field. A lot of that is donated time, Joe, and I appreciate that. My radio team, Kevin Turner, Kent French, and Scott Tinsley, you guys were great. I mean, no other high school program in the state of California has a radio program and a professional team like you. Thank you very much for all your efforts. Father Steve, thank you very much. What can I say? I love you, buddy. Appreciate everything that you do. To you parents, tremendous sacrifice financially, emotionally. I appreciate everything that you do in supporting this program. Your young men will go away from this experience better people. I can guarantee you that. You have to go away from this experience being proud of whatever your sons did, whether it was an all-CIF selection, an all-league selection, a touchdown, or just a contributor. The hard work and the effort that these young men put into this program has to be recognized by you. I have to tell you, when we got to the quarterfinals, and we got to the semifinals when we arrived at that stadium and that tailgate crew, which is most of you parents, up on top of that parking structure, I'll tell you, that's what modern day football is all about. That's what being a modern day parent is all about. I'll never forget those cold nights and hearing you guys rooting us into the stadium. Thank you very much. Seniors, how many times have you heard me say to you about adversity and success? You look adversity straight in the eyes and you turn it to, to, to success. That is what you did in 2001. No team has ever faced the adversity that you faced this year. The injuries were incredible, yet every time somebody went down, 
you bowed your necks harder, and you said, we're going to get it right. I want you to remember, boys, what I told you in that locker room as we wrapped it up down at the bowl. The CIF semifinals is a great, great accomplishment. You have nothing to hang your heads about. In 1990, we made it to the semifinals and got beat, and we were ecstatic. I feel the same way. Making it to the semifinals this year with all the adversity that this team had to face is a credit to you great seniors. Now you have to move on, and I know that's difficult for you, but men, remember what I taught you. Don't ever back down from it. Look it straight in the eye, whatever type of adversity, and deal with it the way you dealt with it this year. I also want you to remember a little bit of a prayer here. Grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Seniors, if you can remember that, you'll have great success. I already know you're going to have great success. I'm proud of you. I love you. And I'll miss you. Rock and roll, baby.